Lad, you move around. Da 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 da. Desk of Lady Ada. The eyes have it. It's Desk of Lady Ada. Hey there, it's me, Lady Ada, here at my desk on a Friday night where uh, we're doing all sorts of fun stuff. We got electronics. Hey, you want to go to the uh, microscope? Yes, um, we have a microscope. Oh, hold on. We've got like super small LEDs. Yeah, this is like a miniature. Neopixel. Yeah, this is the uh, APA. Yeah. One twenty ones. They're so small. Yeah. Is that's it, smaller than a regular Neopixel. That's it's like a quarter of the size of a Neopixel. Yeah. And it's super small. Yep. Maybe uh, grab a circuit playground and show a regular Neopixel. Yeah. So this is not even this is not even a regular. This is like a. Uh, Look at these gigantic Neopixels. This is yeah. even the half yeah, size one. Down a bit. This yeah. is the half size one, so you can see the um, yeah. chip, and you can see the uh, three little LED um, die there, and then you see the wire bonding for the other pads. But this is an ultra small LED. These are the APA 102s. So you can see the die, um, the uh, the three dies. They're next to the big uh, microcontroller. Yeah. chip I mean it looks big but it's actually really small and then there's a they're under this frosted glass and you can see the uh, cutaway gold or, or copper I like how the camera bonding. freaks out just with bit. the red yeah it's it's like exactly yeah. hitting that IR sensor <laughs> stuff. Yeah. it's green and I have it like super dim right now too this is red I can hold it up or you can show it on, on the overhead if yeah let's go to the regular old overhead yeah, so this is what I was showing. So this is an 8 That was eight. underneath the microscope. Yeah, this was underneath the microscope. So this is an 8x8 RGB matrix using APA 102-2020s. So yeah, really small. So this is, uh, these are like individual small neopixels. Let me see if I have any, like, do I have any normal size neopixels? I don't know. I don't think anything available. But yeah, anyways, super teeny. So uh, this is like high density matrix that I, I made to uh, try these out. Looks pretty good. Colorful, small. This is about as high density as you can make it. You can't, you know, to, you have to v put vias underneath them. So for like, not if you don't want to pay a lot more for uh, extra small vias, this is about as small of a grid you can get. So running off of my feather. Anyways, that's like one thing I wanted to show off. Okay. So I'll probably put actually make these in the shop. I might put little. Uh, ears on this so you can um, mount it because right now it's like you know you have to solder onto the back I want oh. to make it compact question from the chat wait is there a question question time <laughs> um, question is, your skull <laughs> yeah I know. Uh, how many would fit on a feather wing I think probably like I don't know like 12 by 5 or something or 12 by 6 so I might make a feather wing with this. I mean, the thing is, is that they're a little more expensive than Neopixels, and, and there's a lot, so it'll, it would be a little expensive, but, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Howdy. Pretty cool little LEDs. Let me see if I can get it to uh, autofocus. No, it's like, I hate you. Okay. Yeah, it's freaking. It'll do okay with, you know, red just messes everything up. Yeah, the red, I don't know, maybe there's a good sensor. That... So there you go, so you can see. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I like it. Even though, you know, it's not, um, the pixels aren't as diffuse. Like the nice thing about NeoPixels is that epoxy lens really kind of blends the LED. These are a little bit more pointy, right? They're very point sourcey, but I still, um, I still like them. So that's demo number one. 
So that was fun. We actually, for this, instead of hand soldering these, we um, cut a, a laser cut a stencil and uh, pasted it and then placed, we placed the LEDs individually and then put them through the oven. But hand soldering these is a total pain. I, I don't recommend it. We sell the individual LEDs in the shop, yeah. but they're, you know, really need, they're so small that I really do recommend uh, hot air or something. They survive hot air quite well. The epoxy is very strong. Robot friend. Like, you need yeah. a robot friend. Robot friend. Okay, so that's demo number one. The yeah. second demo is um, playing with the Gemma M0 prototypes. And um, I asked Phil B if he would be interested in adapting our sound playing sketches for the analog out on the uh, Gemma M0. So that the, uh, the Sam D chip has one uh, digital analog converter. It's an analog output, not an analog input. And so um, if you want to play audio, it can sound really good. And what's neat is because it even has 256K of flash, you can store quite a bit of audio in flash. You know, if you think about it, even with 8 kilohertz audio, it's like 15 to 30 seconds, uh, depending on the quality. So I have a couple demos. So first up, let's just look at the uh, waveform. So I've got this Gemma here. And I'll, um, I'll unplug the uh, LED grid, and I'll power this up. And then uh, if we go to the oscilloscope cam. Scope cam. Um, you can see, you know, really nice uh, analog waveform. So like you know, normally with a microcontroller to get audio out, you would have a high speed PWM. But even then you have to do quite a bit of filtering to make the audio sound good. It's, it's, it's challenging because you have to have very high speed PWM. Um, and you have to filter it a lot to get something good. Um, the nice thing about the uh, audio out is it's, it's like if it's perfectly smooth and it's 10 bit, so you get pretty good audio quality. So um, to demo this, I'm just gonna like hook it up to the speaker, these little speakers here. And um, it's pretty simple, you just take the, uh, the headphone jack and then you just connect alligator clips. Do you to wanna it. leave it on the scope or do you wanna do the overhead while you do this? The overhead I think, because right. it's gonna be all right. Not as audio -y. Back it up a bit so you can yeah, see more. Yeah, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna bring this out. Whoa. Hold on. There's yeah. a lot going on here, I know. Yeah. I've been like living with a speaking spell for a week. Yeah, I know. It's a challenge. Life's tough. Um, yeah, okay. it's fine. So uh, let's um, hook this up. So I'll connect ground to ground. And then audio to audio. I don't remember what this is doing. Oh yeah, this is the um, eight bit uh, audio. This is from Frequency, the um, album that uh, yeah, we published. Put it that way. That's pretty good. I mean, it's That's coming uh, off a of Gemma. That's it's crazy. It's coming off a of Gemma, and um, you can tell what song it is. Yeah, that'd be good. So the uh, the only thing to watch for is you know you should you can't plug it into headphones directly. Uh, one, because it's um, there's a DC offset, and second, it can't drive headphones. You have to go through like powered speakers like this, but you know you can get those like USB rechargeable powered speakers. So you can hear it's like it's just a loop of like 15 seconds, and I think this takes about 100k of flash. Yeah. So it's nice. You can play like a bunch of audio clips off of your Gemma or your Trinket or your Feather even without even needing external um, storage. Pretty good. And then, um, so then we're like, okay, well, let's do another demo where we, uh, I think this demo was the talky demo. We'll find out. Talkie. So now I'm going to take my other Gemma. I got two. And we'll hook it up. This goes to ground. Oh, no, this is the, uh, the DAC demo. I think. Okay, so what's going to happen? So this is playing... Three different samples, 8-bit and 10-bit. We were trying to figure out whether 8-bit sounds better than 10-bit. And it turns out that 10-bit audio only really matters for music. For speech, you can't really tell the difference. Hi there. So this is... That's the 8-bit. Okay. That's the 10-bit. 8-bit. No, that sounds familiar. 10-bit. It sounds a little bit better. You can yeah. kind of tell. Hi there. 8-bit. Hi there. 10 bit. So it's kind of just like, you know, audio test. I mean, uh, you know, if you look at the Uncle oscilloscope. How 9000 is drunk. Yeah, so it's like, you know, little, little clips. Um, 
that you can play. So, you know, like 10-bit, you have to do some packing with it, but 8-bit is, actually sounds fine. Um, you know, you, you gain so much, not gain, but you, you retain so much quality by not having to filter out the PWM that always gives it a very buzzy, you know, uh, yeah. a sound because it, it, it filters in um, to your amplifier. Yeah. And so the upshot of the whole thing was, well, first off, you know, I kind of like this, uh, you know, this clipping on to it. We also wanted to try um, the Taki library. Yeah. So the Taki library is a, like a phoneme uh, player that's available for Arduino. And it sounds okay when it pl plays the piezo, but it's, it's, it's very speak and spelly. It's quite challenging to understand it. So we were like, well, let's go and um, try the Taki library. So, you know, the, the one that is, um, the nice demo is there's a Tom's Diner demo. So let me... I'm gonna go to the computer and then... Yeah, so let's go to the computer. Yeah. And the only thing is my computer is being really finicky. So I'm going to try to update this with the Taki demo. Yeah. But you can see it on, if you go to the Adafruit GitHub, if you want to download it, if you have a zero. And um, what's nice about this is it, it, it doesn't use any memory at all, really. It automatically generates the phonemes and, and, and like wave, generates the waveforms, not like a wave synth. Yeah, I'm having problems bootloading today. It's definitely my computer, because this works great at work. You got 8,000. I have like 8,000 devices. Com, com I, devices. I was, you know, anyone who does USB development knows you get your computer into like a really weird state. And like mine, even if when I reboot, it's still in a weird state. And um, sometimes it's it still doesn't, like, it's not so Com bad. 45. Yeah. Okay, so this time it came out. You know, if we go to your computer, we should change the resolution. Oh, yeah, yeah, so whatever. I was going to okay. show code. Okay. So, so what's up? Let's see if this is working. Um, yeah. So this is going to play... Yeah, so I was a little disorganized today. Let me change the resolution back. Okay. Well, I'll well I can, I can show it. Um, okay, so this is going to play... Um, keep it. Keep it. This is going to play uh, Tom's Diner by Suzanne Vega. So I'll, I'll I am sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner. I am waiting at the counter for the man to pour the coffee. So what's nice is that, you know, you, totally can, tell what that is. you can generate any tone and sound. Like you actually tell it each word what phoneme to say. So it's, you, it uses like the... Some like old TI speak and spell type or BBC micro, like they, they kind of did a phoneme generating uh, library and it was ported to Arduino. It doesn't sound great, but it does make mean you don't have to have audio clips. And so for like the Arduino Uno where you don't have space, it can be nice. You can use this also on some, you know, like the AT Tiny 85 where, you know, you can have a high speed PWM generate the audio. That might not be too bad either. So there's that. And then. Um, Monty, I can name that tune and. Four bits. Yeah, so I can show that what Taki looks like. Name that too. It's it's a little bit it's a little traumatic to uh, to you. So uh, basically, you you have memory with all of these bytes and all of and there's like generators that do create this for you. But each each one of those bytes is like a, a phoneme indicator. And then if you go to um, like this voltmeter demo. So, you know, this person defined the word zero, the word one, the word five, you know, 15, and then 100,000 minus millivolts. And, you know, you basically generate these little phoneme chunks, and then you can have it speak a number. So again, like if you're doing something where you want to generate, you know, like line number 85, error, or um, mo motor number four is 98 degrees centigrade. This is an option because you wouldn't have to have a clip for each one of those, you would generate automatically. So I can try uploading the voltmeter code. Okay, this isn't a question, this is a comment. So yeah? This way. Um, someone said there's software that can remove USB devices that aren't used. Do you ever try that? Oh no, I just trust me, that's not the Never? No, that's not the problem. It's it's like you you start 
really messing with USB yeah. stacks, and it's like computers hate it. Yeah, suggestion was USB view to clear our USB devices. Yeah, it's not the device. It's like I delete it, I, I reinstall it. At some point, you actually just um, you just kill your Windows computer. Yeah, sometimes we have to unplug it. Oh yeah, like when when I like when this gets bad, I can't shut down my computer and reboot it. I have to shut down, remove all USB devices. Yeah. Wait a few minutes, plug it back in, and then I can like pl I mean like it gets totally hosed. It's mm. awesome. Uh, okay, so this is the voltmeter demo. Six hundred and fifty-nine millivolts. That's cool. Six hundred and seventy-four millivolts. So you know, it, it's okay. I mean, I, I actually tried out the because um, I, I was actually thinking about this because Microbit has in the MicroPython they also have a um, they also have code for doing this kind of phoneme generation, but it actually doesn't sound as good because it does, they don't have an analog output, they have a PWM output, so it's like, it's really scratchy. It's like, you kind of have to know what it's saying. Um, like, it wouldn't, I don't, I mean, I don't think you would be able to understand numbers unless you kind of had some idea of what numbers it was um, trying to tell you. And then um, the final thing is, okay, well, like, you know, the reason I was doing this is because I wanted to get the Circuit Playground Express, which has an analog output, uh, connected to the speaker, I wanted that to um, play on the little speaker. So, can we go to the uh, overhead and I'll just I'll yeah. show this really fast. So, the new version of Circuit Playground, I didn't have the exact same speaker size, so I just like wired this up. But I switched the transistor for a little Class D um, amplifier. I'll get really close. We got a request. Uh, yeah. Portal 2's uh, I want you gone. You know that song at the end. That yeah. yeah, we could do that. I could do that, but. Oh, you know what? We'll do that when we like launch. So like, it'll go viral and it'll be a meme on the. Well, what's neat is you could actually have like all of her speaking samples. I think like you can get wave Likes packs and shares. And you can just it can just speak them. So this is um, now got a, a little class D amplifier. It was a little bit more expensive. It's like fifteen cents per. It's the Pam. Uh, eighty three oh one. Uh, class D, and um, and then I just like you know yeah this the speaker is a little bit too big so I didn't solder it in place so I just wired it up, and you're not going to get really good quality audio out of this. I mean well you can you can get okay quality audio or you can get loud audio can't get both, um, but uh, compared to the piezo from like the very like PWME output only it's not too bad, so let's hook this up. I don't even remember what this had programmed on it. Oh it had the. Uh, the sound effects. Let's go. I can also try updating the, with the uh, this voltmeter. See how that sounds, or the Tom's Diner. Let me see. So Scott's in, see Scott's in Chinese. Speak and spell use T I L P C speech tech. They could compress an utterance, their term for each sound to make something as small as 30 bytes for something like I. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's super teeny, it's extremely compressed. Yeah. Okay, so this is Tom's Diner. That's cool. So, I mean, it doesn't sound nearly as good as, you know, a, a three inch diameter, you know, three ohm, four ohm yeah, but, speaker. But what I like is this is one of the only standalone you know, twenty dollar ish Python Arduino boards that does all of this, and it yeah. talks now, and it talks. Yeah, That's cool. and it's and it's okay. And if if you um like right now, I have it like pegging the audio a little bit. It's it's like yeah, it's kind of clipping, and that's why you get. This is just us more. messing around. Like yeah, people are gonna distortion. go. People are gonna go nutty with this. This is gonna be cool. I think for like it's like if people want to have like a little drum machine or synth sound, I think it would sound okay. Cause like you know like bleepy synth. Are, yeah. are fine. Like you're going to get something pretty good for a bleepy synth. Another thing is that if you actually play audio and you don't do what I do, just overdrive the speaker like crazy to get like loud, distorted volume, um, and you hold up to your ear, it actually, you know, it's it's no different than your in-ear headphones. Like it's the same size speaker, so you actually get like not audiophile, but you get like pretty good audio. So like. You know, that could be a thing where it's like, okay, we'll hold up to your ear to, to listen, but it's still better than nothing. And yeah. then I was thinking of maybe bringing out the analog zero pin 
so that you could do that thing where you, um, uh, you know, hook up alligator clips to, um, you know, your, your 3.5 millimeter jack. Because I think, like, the audio is pretty good. Like, 10 bits audio is pretty good into a stereo system or, or you know, a little, little uh, rechargeable speaker. Yeah. Um, a lot of, you know, some people have Bluetooth speakers, but usually there's like a headphone in jack. So that could be pretty good. Um, I'll hook up my like Apple headphones and see if like, you know, what, what happens to them. I mean, I don't think they'll get destroyed. I think they just will, they'll just not sound so great because they're going to be, yeah. they're going to have a DC offset. So that's the hacking. That's mostly Phil B actually. I've just been playing with it, but he actually did the work. So thank you, Phil yeah. B. That was this week. On and, Twitter, at Paint Your Jargon. Yeah. And then I have some Big other ups. Um, fun things so I can just some updates and go to the computer. Yeah, you got some neat stuff. Yeah, so um, one is I've got this um, blue fruit feather Woo, wing. look at that. It's 3D. Yeah, it's 3D. I do like to see my Gerber's in 3D. Now that I do, I do this now, I, I don't really... Um, what um, version of Eagle did you export from? Uh, I, don't, that? I don't remember what I have. It's like six something. Safe. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is the total, okay, just total, like, let me just break character for a second here. Yeah. So, uh... Total like maker businessy inside. Yeah. Uh, baseball thing. So you saw um, Carl Bass, CEO of Autodesk, um, did an uh, interview with Panda Daily. Yeah. Completely critical of current politics, which you know half half people are, half people aren't. Um, next day, uh, gone from Autodesk. Everyone's saying, you know, oh, it was planned and all that stuff. Next day, resign. Going to stay on the board, going to be in a play for a bit. They said this was planned yeah. for the last 18 months. Um, so Autodesk ha has their CEO, who was like the lead maker investor. I think he invested in yeah. half a dozen different companies, including like Quirky, um, is now exiting the stage. I think he probably did, you know, they probably did have a succession plan. Because he's been there I for a while. I think this accelerated. But he just he maybe was just like, you know what, I'm out. Yeah. Or he could have known that he's leaving the next he, day, so he's like, I get to say whatever I want in yeah. an article because I'm yeah. out. It's, it's, it's unusual, but it's they, unusual. Th there was a follow-up article, and, there, and he made a good point. He's like, well, if there's not a vacancy, people are unlikely to maybe want this job. Yeah. So you have to get out of the way. Yeah. Anyways, um, so lots of transitions going on in the auto this world. They got um, Eagle, and now their CEO is out. Carl was like at every maker fair. He was. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Baseball bats. Yeah. Making. Okay. Back to the uh, back to the show. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so uh, new feather designs for K, K Town. So I just kind of show what everybody else is doing too, uh, whether they like it or not. So yeah, he designed this, and we kind of worked on it. It's looking good. And our fifty two, so it'll be a nice Bluetooth feather wing or feather. And then. Um, I'm looking at the crypto auth lib because we have um, a crypto wing, so I have to look at this and maybe port this library. Luckily for me, they actually did write some code. I just have to like port this, and then I have this kind of cool sensor that I might make a breakup for. It's the AS7262 Spectral a Sensing Engine. This is very interesting. I have never quite seen this. It's a sensor that has six spectrum sensing. So usually, it, at best, you can get like, you know full visible, maybe IR, red, green, blue. And this one has six separate um, wavelengths that it can read, and, and it's like they're... Um, this reminds me of, like, the PyCom, one of their boards that we have in our store now. It has, like, every form. It has LoRa, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Morse it's code. It's like that, but with, yeah. with color. But it's like, yeah, it has all the wavelengths. Where's the data sheet? Man, I, yeah, I think some that. engineers or collectors are just like, I want... I want all the wavelengths. Well, what's interesting is they're like for scientific, you know, projects, this could be really handy because yeah. it's like, it's not a full spectrometer, but it's like, well, I'm getting a little close, right? You're getting, you know, you're, you're going from three or, four, you know, four maybe with IR to red, you know, 600, 650, 600, um, 575, 550, 500, and so, 450. So what are you going to do? Get a chip and make a board or what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah. But I, mean, I mean, it could be neat for like, you know, I just thought it was an interesting sensor. Like, you know, there's, Sense hat. there's so many, um, you know, accelerometers, it's like temperature sensors is boring, but this is, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. AMS makes yeah. pretty good sensors, actually. I like, I like the, uh, their light sensors. I want to know what color it is when I'm upside down at 5G's. Red? 
I don't know. I put it on my eyeball or something. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's news. Interesting stuff. Okay. That's so I that's know. everything. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot. All right. That's our show. Howdy. Um, we'll do some broadcasts over the weekend. Totally. All right. Can get this howdy going. There you go. Howdy. I think when it's green because it's just there because of the thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Hold on. Let's see what yeah. happens when it goes green. It's going to see through your soul. Really? Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's you just... Yeah, you can see through. Did you see? No. Watch watch it again when it when it goes through. Yeah. Yeah, on, watch. Get closer. Watch. After this, you'll see. You can see through to the screen. Watch. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Look, 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 look. See how you can see through? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Whoa. Yeah, weird. Yeah, no, good good job. Very green. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll do some more um, videos over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get back to the, the Q-Touch hacking. Um, I got a, like, I, I decompiled a bunch of that code. Um, I just went, you just sent, like, a couple hours to set through and just did all of the register mapping. Um, so next up, I'm going to just try to get it working, and then I'll do a video if that happens, or if not. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, folks, we're the only ones doing stuff like this um, right this second. But um, just feel like <laughs> what we are. I mean, we have this electronic store, and uh, that's how you can support us. Uh, go to adafruit.com, pick up some kits. Are there any uh, other questions? or? That's it. Great. We're done. All right. All right, next time we'll get some Portal 2 yeah. or Portal 1. Listen to clips. some uh, tunes and uh, look at some eyes. <laughs>